let's take a look at how we might make a transformation from one coordinate system to another. So let's assume I have an x and a y axis and a particle moving on a curve in the xy coordinate system. And the particle is at this location. Then we know from our discussions earlier that the normal, excuse me, the tangential unit vector is tangent to the curve. And then the normal unit vector is perpendicular and towards the inside of the curve. Well, the x-axis in this scenario might be parallel to this point. And that means that the tangential unit vector is going to make some angle theta with respect to a line parallel to the positive x-axis. So E tangential then might be broken down. Let me put it over here for a second. E tangential might be broken down into a portion parallel to the x-axis. Here's the angle theta. So this is the cosine of theta times the magnitude of E tangential, which of course is 1. So that's in the i direction. And then over here we have the sine of theta times the magnitude of E tangential, which again is 1. And that's in the j direction. All right. Then E normal, because it's at 90 degrees, is also going to have a reference angle. In this case, with respect to the y-axis. Because remember, x and y, of course, are perpendicular to each other. So it's going to have a component in the x direction. But that's going to be along the sine of theta. And you'll notice it's to the left. So hence the negative sign that you see here. And then the cosine of theta. And that's in the positive j direction. Now you've got to be careful because remember that sometimes E normal will be in that direction. And then you'll still have an angle theta in here. But notice in this scenario, the x direction is positive, the y direction is negative. So be really careful about whether or not the inside of the curve is counterclockwise with respect to E tangential or clockwise with respect to E tangential as far as the E normal vector goes. Similar transformation equations can be given for E radial in the X and Y transformation and E transverse. I won't write them out prefer that you maybe spend a moment and try to figure out which way those would be. In addition, <clears throat> it's very common for us to want to know something about the radius of curvature here. Okay, what is this radius of curvature rho? Well, you might recall from calculus, so I won't do a derivation of this equation, but from calculus 3, this radius of curvature is 1 plus the derivative of y with respect to x. So we're looking at the derivative of this function. Here's the x-axis, here's the y-axis. What's the derivative of this function, y, with respect to x? And so we divide that. Okay, so you square the derivative of y with respect to x, add it on to 1, take that whole thing to the 3 halves power. Notice this is dimensionless, right? dy has length, dx has length, the combination has no length, so the numerator has no dimension. Take it to the 3 halves, not a problem. The denominator, on the other hand, is the measure of the concavity. Second derivative of y with respect to x. Second derivative of y is length. The derivative with respect to x squared is length squared. So basically you have 1 over length over length squared when you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So 1 divided by length over length squared equals 1 times length squared over length. 
length, which is length, which makes sense. This is a radius of curvature. It should be length. So the dimensions for the radius of curvature is length. So that's how you find the radius of curvature of a function at a location. So the radius of curvature here is different than it is here, is different than it is here. Because the derivative and the second derivative are all different at those locations. Another thing that we didn't mention, and it's kind of worth mentioning, is polar acceleration. Now remember what I said in the last lecture. Velocity, which is the derivative of position with respect to time by definition, or r dot. This was written as r dot e radial hat plus r theta dot e transverse hat. What do I do if I want to take a derivative of velocity with respect to time? Because the derivative of velocity with respect to time, by definition, that's the acceleration. Well, what do I do? Well, I'm going to have to use the product rule and the summation rule. That is to say, we're going to take the derivative of this term. But this is two terms, r dot and e sub r. So that's the derivative of r dot with respect to time, times e radial, derivative of the first times the second, plus r dot times the derivative of e radial with respect to time. So that's the derivative of this term using the product rule. Then I add to that the derivative of this one. Well, oh my gosh, look at this. I've got three terms in here. So the derivative of the first is the derivative of r with respect to time, times theta dot times e theta plus r times the derivative of theta dot with respect to time, times e theta plus r theta dot times the derivative of e theta with respect to time. So there's three terms here. Inside of brackets is the derivative of this term when I use the product rule, as is required. So here in this bracket is the derivative of this term. All right, so let's simplify things a little bit. The derivative of r dot with respect to time, that's just r double dot. Now that is a measure of how quickly my speed strictly away from or strictly towards the origin is changing. It's a measure of my speed away from the origin towards the origin, how quickly that speed is changing. That's r double dot. That's in the radial direction. Then the second term here has a derivative of e sub theta, but remember that's going to be theta dot e transverse. So this is r dot theta dot, r dot theta dot times e transverse. All right, so there is everything inside that first set of square brackets. So let's just put that, isolate that out there. All right, what do I have here? r dot theta dot e transverse. Well, that's kind of interesting because I just wrote all that down. r dot theta dot e transverse. All right, so you'll notice that this term and this term, this whole term and this whole term are actually the same. And we're, we'll just put a 2 out in front of that here in a little bit. But I want to do this one at a time. Derivative of theta dot with respect to time. Well, that's just r theta double dot. Derivative of theta dot with respect to time is theta double dot. And that's times the transverse unit vector. Then I get r theta dot. Well, what's the derivative of e sub theta with respect to time, what's well, going to turn out to be very much like the derivative of e sub r with respect to time, it's going to be theta dot times e tangential, sort of, sort of. It is an e tangential because of this right-handed coordinate system. Here's e, not tangential, I apologize, e radial. Here's e radial, here's e sub theta transverse. If I'm going to go in this direction, I continue going counterclockwise, and so I actually get a minus e radial in here. So I'm going to put a minus sign there. And I get a minus e radial. And so when I simplify, so there's those two terms. When I simplify, I get here's a radial term, here's a radial term. So I get r double dot minus r theta dot squared 
all times the radial term. Again, this is a measure of how my speed away from or towards the origin is changing. This, interestingly enough, is centripetal acceleration. R theta dot squared is R omega squared. That's centripetal acceleration. So that's really nothing that we haven't seen before. Then I have a theta dot or E theta term here and E theta term here and here. So I get plus R theta double dot plus 2R dot theta dot all times the transverse unit vector. This term is a representation of how fast I am speeding up or slowing down in my circle. So imagine you have an object on a spinning chair or on a merry-go-round. You're on the merry-go-round right here. The horses are not moving. The merry-go-round turns on. Your speed is increasing in the, in the arc length direction, if you will. As that speed increases, that's, you know, that's a measure of acceleration. That's this term right here. And it could be slowing down as, as you're moving and then your horse comes to a stop. That's this term right here. All right. This term is called the Coriolis effect. I'm not going to really touch that any more than we just said. That's the Coriolis effect. All right, so let's take a look at an example of these coordinate systems. So you can read this here for just a second. I'm not going to spend any time reading it. But notice here's plane A. And the problem says its speed is being increased at a rate of 6 meters per second squared. So that's an acceleration in the direction of the propeller. So this acceleration is in this direction. 6 meters per second squared. All right, 6 meters per second squared. That's speeding up or slowing down. 6 meters per second squared then represents a tangential acceleration. Plane A is moving in a straight line, so the radius of curvature there is infinite. There is no centripetal acceleration for plane A. So the acceleration of A vector is 6 meters per second squared in the tangential direction. 6 meters per second squared in the tangential direction. Plane B is flying at the same altitude, all right? follows a radius of curvature of 2,000 meters. So that's given, that's my rho value, 2,000 meters. And it's actually slowing down, right? The speed is decreased at two meters per second squared. So there's an acceleration, tangential, but notice the plane's moving forward, but the tangential acceleration is backward, that's fine. That's two meters per second squared. So the acceleration of B, is minus 2 meters per second squared in the tangential direction. And then we have a v squared over r. Oops, not minus, that's plus. v squared, so 520 kilometers per hour, squared over a radius of 2,000 meters. And that's going to be in the normal direction. All right, so we're going to do, need to do a little conversion here. So 520 kilometers per hour. That is going to be... ...144 meters per second. And then I square that and divide that by 2,000 meters. And that gives me an acceleration here of 10.43 meters per second squared. So the acceleration of B is minus 2 in the tangential direction plus 10.43 in the normal direction meters per second squared. And that is going to be towards the center of that curve. Curvature. So 10.43 meters per second squared. All right, we won't worry about the actual questions about the accelerations relative to each other until later on in this section. But that's the acceleration of these two planes. Now, if I wanted to discover what is the acceleration of these two planes 
in the x and y coordinate system, where x and y are left, right, up, and down, as is normal. Clearly, the acceleration of A is strictly in the x direction, so 6i meters per second squared. But B, when I draw the x-axis this way and the y-axis this way, I see this is 30 degrees, so if I were to extend that out, that'd be 30 degrees, which means this is also 30 degrees, and this is also 30 degrees. I'm going to let you guys play with your trig for a little while to make sure that works out. So the acceleration of B, I'm going to look at the 2 meters per second squared, and I'm going to break that down into 2 times the sine of theta. Now the sine of theta is opposite the 30 degrees, so that's left. Left is in the I direction and negative. And then there's also going to be a 2 cosine theta. Keep in mind, my 30 degrees here is measured with respect to the Y axis. Cosine is up, so that's in the J direction. And then I add this component now. All right, and that component, I'm going to have 10.43 cosine of theta, because that's adjacent to the 30 degrees, so 10.43 cosine of theta, that's in the i hat direction, but that's left, so we put a minus sign, and then 10.43 degrees sine theta, that's down, that's in the j direction, but down, so there's a minus sign there, and of course my units are meters per second squared, Add this I component to this I component. Those your total I component. And then this J component and this J component for your total J component. Of course, theta is equal to 30 degrees. And that will get you your acceleration for plane B in a Cartesian system.